for all you that are for all you guys that haven't been catching this stuff live um this thing's for you good morning and welcome back to the last class of our pumpkins today we paint this thing going to hang out just a little bit longer wait for some people to show up and then we will get busy on painting this bad boy <clears throat> in the hue well, we got one one view We got four. Here we go. Man, with this being, I primed this thing white. Uh, we could have started black, whatever. And you could even take from your primer and go ahead and do a black base. I used to always do black base paint first before I did anything else. Uh, I just changed a lot of stuff up over time, just playing uh, with different paint schemes. So I'm not basing this pumpkin today in black. I'm just starting with the primer that I got right here. It'll still, it'll work just as well as anything else has worked. I'm trying to find, I had a, where did that go? Do, do, do. I had a shorty brush. This will work too. I guess I'll use it. But I can't find it. Okay. So, first thing we're going to start off with, and I'm going to have to change, just change angles for you guys. Let's see if we can get this. Um, see if we can get this down a little bit. Does that look? That's a little bit better. It doesn't have so much of a shine on it. The first thing I'm going to do is paint the inside. I did prime the inside as well as priming the outside. The inside is going to be solely white, no other color. The reason I leave it white inside, it really reflects light. Uh, <clears throat> so it looks good outside in the dark. Almost any kind of battery operated little candle thing or whatever. You put inside this as long as you got a white background in there, it'll really shine that stuff up. So I'm gonna start off with just a little acrylic white. And I used to have, well, I can't even find it, but this is gonna work. Back in the day, I've always taken because I've always had cheap brushes and to paint the insides a lot of times. I took these things and cut them down where they were like just really short little things. And I go inside and it's easier to paint that way. But this will work just as well. Hey, Trish. Hey, hello, Ross. Good morning to everybody that's here. I'm still trying to caffeinate myself. I got up a little bit earlier this weekend than last weekend. And my body's not used to waking up real early on the weekends. Good morning. So let's... Ooh. Just overdid it on the paint there. That's going to be a waste, but it's okay. Now we got everybody coming in. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Anyway, first thing we're going to get this out of the way is uh, painting the inside white. I always want to paint the inside first. Get that done, and we'll move on to the outside. Because once we get this layer of white in here, you don't really need to go back in here and do anything else to it. You're all done. I hope all you guys that are building along have are ready to paint today. I know there's a few out there that were trying to do some play catch up. Trying to get their pumpkins to dry out. Weren't sure if they were going to make it in time for this but 
Uh, if you're not painting along this time right now, at least maybe you'll pick up some some ideas that'll help you paint later. Oh, I'll show you guys something here in just a minute as soon as I get this. We did that stem last week. We did the detailing with cotton balls too. And now that that's all dried up, I want to show you guys how it came out because that looks really good. It actually looks like a, it almost, dare I say, it looks like a real pumpkin stem, almost. That's a pretty bold statement, though. Good morning. Grant, morning, and ex Exendial. Is that right? Well, I know I butchered that. Good morning. Marlena, nice to see you again today, as always. To anybody that's new or just come across this, thanks for joining. Thanks for sitting around to watch some live. Uh, if you've subscribed to the channel, thanks for that too. Um, <laughs> the latest video that was posted besides live was the um, man eating plant. And I know I did that one a little out of the ordinary with some um, different goofy voices to mixed reviews on that some people did not like that at all um one of those people was my wife <laughs> and then some people did did like it so whatever you guys let me know uh or if you'd rather be more serious when i'm doing those videos uh i got some more i'm going to produce and put out i'm just trying to make them a little more entertaining i'm trying to grow the channel get some more views make people enjoy what they're watching and then carrie is not with us today she has a friend of ours that has a um like a where she works or having a party thing or whatever and she didn't want to go by herself and so she asked carrie if she would come along so she's upstairs getting ready for that. So I will do the best that I can. Uh, to answer and watch all these questions coming on uh, the live side. You guys bear with me though. I needed, well, maybe I can do, I can probably do it with this right here. <clears throat> No, oh, thanks. Is it Tisha? Trisha? Trisha. There's an R there. Trisha. Yeah, the snowman was pretty cool. The Twisted Snowman. Uh, I did some videos on some normal snowmen, too. For anybody that likes to go that route as well. I'm trying to figure out. The best way to do these lives so here's the thing too we're all this is going to be the last one with this and with this being this cotton ball pumpkin it's really taken what we've done this we've gone four live videos something like that i think it is on doing this guy just showing this technique uh if you guys are interested after this one's done and you want me to do more live stuff like this on the weekends like saturdays or whatever we can do another pumpkin again which is pretty easy and then this time we could do it with um, paper mache clay and i can go over how uh, i apply my clay and stuff because when i do 
there's a lot of people out there when they do their clay, they might do half of it and then let it dry and come up and do another half or whatever. Um, there's some techniques I do where I do the whole thing. I'll clay the whole thing up all in one setting and sculpt the face and do all that all at once. And it goes through pretty quick. Anyway, let's see this stem today. It's hard to tell. This camera's not quite picking it up. But doing the cotton balls and stuff and making that stem that actually turned out, it actually looks almost like a real pumpkin, uh, real pumpkin stem. Cricket says, yes, please. Yes, the air dry clay. Okay, so once we get done with this, uh, we'll start a whole other class from, if you guys want to follow along from the very beginning to the end. So we'll go through making the armature just like we did with this, which is basically going to be the same thing all over again. Um, if you guys have seen that on this one, cool. When I do it, if you guys just want to show up to talk, that's great because I love seeing you guys on there. And uh, yeah. So let's get after painting this guy. I'm not going to use, I thought about using this big brush at the beginning, uh, but I'm not going to use that to start this thing out with. So this is how, anymore, this is how I paint my pumpkins. Um, there's faster ways to paint pumpkins, but this just looks really cool. Like if you guys have seen the pumpkin demon and the way that the orange and stuff is on him, uh, I just think it really makes a pumpkin look good. Uh, you could base this whole thing out in black and then do a dry brush of white over the top of it. And then uh, once that dries, come back with some watered down oranges and stuff and just slap it right over the top. That gets pretty good depth and it does look good. And it's actually very fast painting, but... This painting, I don't know. I, it's more of, a, I guess, an artistic type of thing or whatever, but I just really enjoy the way it looks. So what we're going to do, we're going to start out with a little bit of orange, straight orange. That just needs to go away. And let's get something to stir this up with. Oh, hello. Probably going to need a little bit more than that. This is the only thing when I do this every time. Like, I probably waste a little bit of paint because I never quite measure out the paints I'm using. And I'm constantly mixing. And, you know, sometimes I run out of paint before I'm all the way around the pumpkin. Good morning, Halloween creations. Okay. And now we're going to add just a little bit. More, more than that. I'm going to add some brown to this orange. I want to darken this orange down. So our first base layer of paint on this entire pumpkin is going to be a real dirty orange. I may have gone, just see how muddy that is. That's probably a little too dark, so I'm going to add just a little bit more orange to this. Brighten it up just a little bit. Move some of that out. That didn't. It's hard to. It's easy to darken. It takes a lot more to lighten back up to go the opposite way. See, you might already tell you I'm going to waste a lot of paint on this pumpkin, I think. Morning, Linda. All right, let's see. Maybe you guys can see the difference. This is just a bit lighter than that first mix right there, and that's what we're going to go with. So we got a dirty, what I call a dirty orange, and we're going to 100% 
paint all the way around this pumpkin with this. And I am going to thin this with just a little bit of water. This base coat's not that important to thin, but kind of as, um, as we build on top of this base coat with these lighter colors, if we thin them a little bit with water, it helps it helps bleed in that transition uh, so we don't see harsh lines between the, the lighter colors that we're using as we build up. And let me get this again. Because I'm going to paint him all the way around. I don't want him to stick. I don't know. I might play with it just on the bottom. It's easier to paint it when they're solid, sitting solid. So I want to keep this to the side just in case. Just in case I need it. There's a good chance I'll need it. And here we go. Like I said, this dark orange, this is going to be, we're going to go 100% all the way around this pumpkin with this dark orange. And this is this is our base color that we're going to build all the rest of this skin off of. I need to look out, you know, because I just use these cheap craft paints, but it would be cool if there was like a, I haven't seen really a good burnt colored orange or a dark, uh, pre-made darker dirtier orange it'd be nice if there was a dark color out like that that way i didn't have to mix it every single time and it'd be consistent always maybe that's something i should do is try to get a hold of a paint company try to do some kind of collaboration about uh Pumpkin colors, right? Creating specific pumpkin colors. That'd be interesting. Now I've got a little bit of that white. Woo, and I just hit it there in the mouth here that isn't dry yet. So I'm going to try to be a little bit careful. I don't want to drag that white out in here. I'll give that a little more time to dry. But I am going to go back up in here with a smaller brush and get like inside the mouth, right? go through all that too. I want this whole thing to snap and look like it was a pumpkin. I may have to hit insides of those eyes with a little bit of a heat gun so I don't mix that white in. Uh, I guess I'll say, in case no one saw on uh, Facebook or YouTube before or whatever, so after this thing all dried up this past week, I did go ahead and I did a layer of uh, spar urethane right over the raw uh, mache. And then I gave that a good 24 hours to dry. And after that was good and dry, um, I used some rattle can, I think it was even Rust-Oleum primer that I sprayed over the, that. That way we could give this acrylic paint something to bite to um, because the, uh, the spar urethane I used is uh, glossy. 
And when you let a paint completely dry like that, like a, a urethane or something like that, that's a finish. When you let that dry, if you don't prime it or something to give it a bite or whatever, then you got to go back in and try to sand it a little bit. That way you can, your next layer of paint can actually bite it. Uh, if you don't do that, and I've, there's been some of my projects where I haven't done that. And they've held up pretty decent, but when you don't do that, you really run the risk of being able to uh, chip or peel the paint, your color paint off real easy. Like real easy. Let's get this top side. When I do this top side, I'm not worried about, like, if I get a little bit on, because you've seen me hold the stem, and look, I even got some orange on the stem there. It's not a real big deal, because we're going to be painting the stem brown. So our first coat of paint over the stem will be a darker brown, and it'll go just right over this orange. You won't even know uh, you accidentally got any orange paint on it. See if I can get a better shot for you guys. There's nothing real special about what I'm doing right now. I'm just going around this thing. All the way around this thing. And give it a decent layer of this dirtier orange color. And what I am going to do, because I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but right now, as this is wet and I'm kind of moving it around, I can see where I'm pulling the paint. And it, uh, you can see the white in underneath. So I think I am going to go ahead and hit this with the heat gun real fast. Kind of flash dry this paint a little bit. That way, our next layer, we're not pulling paint and we're adding color to it. Because I really want to darken this down. I really want to darken this down. The whole point of this base color here, not only are we going to blend this all through, but by this being darker, we'll walk away from these um, recesses in here. And we'll go lighter and lighter. And that'll darken those recesses. And that will we'll look real good. This camera... That just looks like a normal orange on that camera, but it's not. It's darker, and also the fact that I've got this. I used a white base instead of a black base. That's uh, that's making it look quite a bit lighter too. But it'll be okay. Well, thank you, Katie. Katie did it. Right on. I'll have to try that uh, the Gorilla Spray. Yeah, that's a good idea if you can find some oops paints or whatever pretty cheap. Uh, absolutely. That's a way to keep some of these costs down. Let's go ahead and get inside these teeth real quick. Mm 
No, oh, yeah, we're gonna bring this bring this little guy here to life with this paint. He should look pretty darn cool when we're done. Ooh, I picked up some white paint for sure. Right there. Trying to avoid that, but I sure hit it. Oh, yeah, I keep picking up that white. Gosh darn it. I'm going to go with this darker orange that I mixed up because I keep hitting this white paint. I don't want to add white to <coughs> our current color we're using. Not at this point in time, I don't. <laughs> Do -do -do. Okay. Heat gun time, let's do this. All right, thanks, brother. I appreciate the appreciate that support, man. Really, really do. Hey Kathy. Awesome to see you on here. I gotta get a plug in for this thing. Hang on, fellas. I thought I was completely set up, but I'm not. But I'm not. <clears throat> All right, talk amongst yourselves a minute ago. I'm gonna mute this so this doesn't get too loud. I'm going to use the um, <laughs> heat gun. I'm going to flash dry this a little bit and move on. Give me just a minute. I feel like I need some elevator music that can be played while I've got that muted in between things. Now, this isn't completely dried down, but I got some bigger wet spots, and I'm just going to kind of pull these a little bit. It kind of pulls the color, too. You can see that. Uh, they were just thicker gobs, and I don't want them to... I want to dry it, but I don't want to dry a pool, I guess, is one way to put it. So I'm just going to thin these down just a bit and hit it again. And then we'll move on with more color.
All right. Now I got that kind of hot. And we're going to let it cool down just a little bit. And move on. What do I do with the paint? There it is. Let me scoot this on back a little bit. So here's the thing with this kind of painting technique. And I learned this, oh my gosh, like seven years ago. Um, we're basically going to be using, we've used brown and we used orange to make this darker shade of orange. We're going to stay with that for a little bit because I'm going to do another coat all the way around. Um, and it should start kind of drying out a little bit quicker as we go. And then uh, we'll start lightening it up. So I'm going to wind up going with the orange and then I'm going to add uh, yellow to it to brighten it. And so sticking with those three colors basically and you're shifting them one at a time right so we got this darker darker brown i'll add a little bit more orange to this to just lighten it up a little bit so we're fading kind of the brown out right and we're going to go through that a while with these brighten a little bit brighter a little bit more bright with the orange and then we'll start adding yellows to it so then we'll add yellows to it to brighten it up even more and as we brighten things up we'll paint less and less of our pumpkin until finally we get to a point where we're just basically using the yellow to come back over and dry brush and i'm only going to really highlight like top ridges on top maybe these real high points right around the eyes and things like that to bring these higher ridges out but if we kind of do that transitional phase like that and as we're doing it really working on blending we'll get a we'll get a nice gradient coming all the way through on this <laughs> so it'll look really good hey jason what's up man thanks brother So we're just going to continue on doing a whole, whole other round of this uh, darker base orange all the way around. Uh, we want 100% coverage. Again, as we start lightening these colors up, we'll, we'll get less and less coverage as the uh, colors become lighter. So we won't be running, you know, 100% coverage every single time. And I'm going to slow down my painting just a little bit with this brush so that I can give this thing a little extra time to try to dry naturally. I don't like really trying to force these things to dry. And that's the only other thing, too, that I'll I'll have to say. So we sealed it up. We did a weather sealer. I did that weather sealer first because this guy will sit outside, and I do everything I can to uh, protect these things from the weather. However, when you're pumpkins or your mache projects are just raw and if you don't do a sealer on them and then you start painting like this your paint actually painting it can go a whole lot faster because with that being super porous that'll just it just sucks the moisture in the water right out of the acrylic paint really fast so it dries extremely quick like way quicker than this and you can move along you're painting a whole lot faster. Um, you just sacrifice a layer of weather protection by doing that. And I've done that quite a few times and then just had one basic layer of um, spore urethane on it to protect it from the weather. And they've done really well. Um, but I really try to give them, I try to give them the best chance possible uh, to go against the weather. Because like I've said a hundred times, I don't bring my stuff back in. If it's going to rain, it just rains on it. 
it just rains on it and I watch it and be like, well, hopefully I made them good enough that they don't fall apart. And for the most part, um, most of my stuff really has held up. I've got props that are over 10 years old, 11 years old. That I'll even use this year. They're still hanging out. That's one thing too. If you do these right, man, I've got I've got mache props that have lasted longer than uh, latex foam filled props that I bought in the past. I know that seems kind of crazy to say, but um, it's just the truth. Fifty-five gallon drum with more flex shield. Nice at nine dollars. That's nice. I tell you what, it's got a little tin in it too. So if you do it first, yeah. And I've got um, some sealers here that got some tin in them. So this is what you can do too when you wind up with something that's tinted. If you take your colors and make them brighter, you know, like I don't know, more cartoonish or whatever, or a lot more brighter. That isn't, you know, what where I'd say you pass the Halloween theme of, of painting. Uh, then when you take those sealers that got that tint to them, that dark tint acts like a, a wash, right? And brings everything back to you and darkens your uh, pumpkin down and your prop down. And you get back to that uh, dark, sinister look that you're going for. So... And when you find good deals like that on different front on different uh, sealers that you can go back over the top with again too just keep that in mind and uh, you can change your paint up a little bit in advance so uh, it can accommodate this tint that's going to be uh, coming over your your project Because that's the one thing I noticed the last time I was getting some sparier things is I used to be able to find the sparier things all day long that were just clear. And lately, at least at Lowe's and Home Depot, I've been having a hard time finding just straight clear. And they've all had some kind of a, a tint to them, a stain or whatever, because they're designed for wood, not for Halloween pumpkins. All right. Another coat all the way through at 100%, all the way around. He's darkening up pretty decent. I'm going to hit around these eyes one more time. And now we're going to, after this, we're going to start lightening up uh, the color. Hey, Jay. It's Jay saying hey to Jay. JK Unlimited. Right on. This is someone I think is new. I haven't seen you in the chat before. Cool. Awesome. Welcome. Welcome to this crazy uh, fun class of painting. It's as exciting as watching paint dry. Right? Right. Nope. Oh, I don't want to do that yet. Not yet. Not yet. What am I doing? I want to go around these eyes first a little bit with the dark stuff. I don't want to. I don't want that. Man, I'm sweating. My house is pretty cold. 
cold right now, and I'm just, it's got to be the coffee. It's either the coffee or it's the stage fright. One of the two. Mm -hmm. Oh, right on. Hey. Looped in, looped in. Ah, I always ooh, mess that up. Yeah, Halloween fever is setting in. It's, uh, it's time to get after it. I'm like... I have so many projects and there's this one particular bigger project I want to make that's going to be a standard YouTube video and I, when I do it I won't do the crazy voice stuff we'll do normal um, but man I'm excited about it but I had like all oh, I've had all these ideas and I do this every year that I've got about 60 different things I want to make and I have all this ambition that I'm going to get it done and then it seems like life takes over sometimes and it just doesn't get that way but i don't know we get some growth we get some growth on this channel and some more patrons and more support and my gosh we might be able to do this all day long every single day and come up with all kinds of cool crazy ideas to paint and show you guys right that's the dream anyway all right let's lighten this up a little bit Hey, Brenda, awesome to see you here. Do, 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 do. Hey, thank you, Carlette. Is it Char Charlotte? Char it's got to be Charlotte. Boom, good. Can't read. Can't read. Butcher you everybody's names. How great is that? So we're going to go all the way around this thing again. But this time we're going to, our paint's getting lighter, right? Not as dark as the first go around. So we can start creating some differences in the shade of this thing. Basically, we're going to pull off like... Um, what you can do with an airbrush without having an airbrush. If that makes sense. I had to double check that and make sure it was going to be lighter. And it is. We get through this and here's the thing just stick with it because this yeah look at this we're almost an hour into this this painting process is not fast uh at all but the results are awesome so if you start painting this way and enjoying it or whatever man you can just kick back you know turn on some music or a podcast or something if you like listening to things like that and just enjoy yourself and uh, have some fun with it and really have fun creating and doing things. Oh, I almost feel like I'm not going to hit it. I was going to hit it, but I'm not going to hit it. I was going to hit it, but I'm not going to hit it. We're not going to force dry it. Uh, here's what we're going to do now. So we've lightened it up just a little bit. And then these... These ridges in here, right? We're going to go all the way around this pumpkin, but now our orange color is a little lighter. It's not really bright, but it's lighter than what this was. So I'm not going to come all the way down to the center of these valleys in here. I'm going to be staying like, I'm going to leave a little pencil line of an edge in there that has this original color. And we're going to brighten this up with this brighter color but it's pretty much close to the same and that's basically what we're going to do we're going to go all the way around and as we do this and as we lighten this up we're going to come further 
and further away from the center with brighter colors to get this depth transition of color from these ridges to the outer part of the pumpkin. Bitchin' Gypsy, hey, thanks. And it's going to be, I'm not going to be able to really give you guys a close-up, I don't think, while I'm doing this. I've got to get... some other cameras and some things set up to where it's easier for me to get you guys up close where you can see exactly what's going on. I'm sure my hand's getting in the way, too. If it is, I apologize. I'm trying to be careful, too, because you can hear this thing hitting the table, and it's not completely dry when I'm doing this, so I am running the risk of uh, pulling the paint off these spots every time I hit the table. Yeah, Charlotte, the, the dark in the ridges, basically, you didn't really miss much because this is the first layer of a lighter color of an orange. So the first thing we did is I made a, a muddier, darker orange by mixing brown in with the orange. And then we painted 100% coverage all over the pumpkin and then did two layers with that. And now we're basically starting with these lighter colors. And like this color, when I say lighter, this color right now isn't a whole lot lighter. It, but it is like a shade or so different than what we just laid down. And that helps blend and create this really cool gradient. Um, you can get crazy and try to keep the colors real close to the same and just do this incredibly um, faint gradient that looks extremely smooth. But I'm not going to go that crazy with it. Um, we'll do this around a few times and then maybe twice on this color. And then I'm going to start brightening it up quite a bit more so we can really see some difference in the uh, paint colors. Oh, running errands and watching. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a dedicated watcher. Or you just smart and realize there's going to be a bunch of boring times in this. That gives you time to get into the store, do what you need to do. Pay attention when things change.
Yeah, and like I said, when I said I was tipping this thing, I definitely was pulling some little spots of paint off. I can see that. Uh, I can definitely see that. I might have to put this up on that post to keep that from happening. I don't want to lose little chips of paint every single time. I'm going around this bad boy. Now I'm going to go to a smaller brush here on top for a bit. It'll make it a little bit easier uh, to stay out of the valleys there on the top side. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, the painting does just bring these things to life. It brings a lot of the character out of them. But I'm going to have to do this this way. It's going to be crazy. So let's pick this up a little bit so you can see. Change some mangles here. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit him real quick again uh, with the old uh, heat gun. You gotta be careful with that heat gun, man, because you can you can heat that glue right back up that we use whenever we uh, oops, whenever we did this start this whole thing in the first place. I got notifications going off all over the place. Mm -hmm -hmm. What do you got going Saturday? She's busy for me today. 
Yeah, man, remodeling's a lot of work. I completely understand. Completely understand. I've got caught up in quite a few remodeling projects that, you know, took my time away from the important things in life, like pumpkins and Halloween and, you know, that type of stuff. Okay, come on now. Give me a break. Dry it a little bit more. Now we're going to get this a little bit drier. Oh, and I just noticed I missed some spots inside these teeth here. Let's go ahead and hit them. I still got some, still have some of my darker orange here on a little side piece. So let's get these. Let's get these taken care of. Okay, I think that pretty much gets all of that. I could go with a lot smaller brush, and it would take longer for us to paint. And then, you know, we would. I think I am going to step the brush down just a wee bit to something more like this, only for the fact that it's going to give me a little more control in some of these areas. It is going to take me longer to physically paint it and that's going to give a little bit extra time for some of these things to um, dry out and now i'm going to add a little more orange to this mix and brighten this up a bit And I can see some spots that are kind of coming through here. Probably, probably could have done another, another nice solid coat of the darker stuff um, before moving on. But here we are. It is what it is. Trying to show you guys this live without it taking 4,000 hours to get done. All right. So I don't know. It's hard to tell. Our orange is a little bit lighter than what it was before. And we're going to continue the same process all around this guy. What I'll do at times, what I was doing right there. Uh, man, let me. Okay, I'm going to try to do this where you guys can see what I was doing. And I'm kind of working over the top of myself. It's kind of a pain. So anyway, staying away from that inside edge. But I've got a harsh edge of this lighter paint. So a lot of times I can just rub my finger right across that hard edge and blend that in or if it's not too wet uh if you've got a brush that doesn't have any paint in it it's nice and dry you can use that brush just to feather and stipple that in between those layers too to create that uh, transition we just don't want um we don't want a harsh harsh line in between these layers right we want it to look natural. And this brush probably worked pretty decent. So this side's kind of 
dried itself up just a little bit. It's not quite so wet. And can go through and blend that out. Some of you gals out there might understand that a little bit. I see my wife when she's uh, putting makeup on how she's got a blender brush or whatever. And blends those different shades of makeup together for a smooth transition. It's the same idea uh, just with paint. So for all you gals out there, let's say you can't paint or don't know how to paint, but you're sitting there pretty much painting your face every single day, I think you guys know a little more about painting than what you realize. And this is where you're going to start becoming time consuming, blending all these colors in. Oh, awesome. Congratulations. She's getting married. Sweet. Lazy Susan with a wire rack. That's the way to go. It'd be nicer. All right, I will try to get this. Let me see if I can get this closer up so you can see what's happening with the paints. I'm sorry, it's tough. Tough to do this. And so here we go. I'm going to work on right here. Hopefully it'll stay focused and you guys can see what's happening. So I'm bringing this right down here, that groove. My brush was a little dry. Hang on. right so then man it's hard to see on the camera but you can see a little bit of a line like right here so now i can take this little dry brush this brush is completely dry no paint on it and this kind of real lightly feather that color in with this other color here Hopefully, that shows you guys a little bit better what's happening. See, I'm staying just away from the center point of that ridge. Now, I know I'm out of camera angle. I'm going, going all going to, going to continue to go all the way down the bottom here, and then I'll blend. I'll come back up to the top and blend that back in right here at the jawline. I'll be doing the same thing, coming right in close to that edge, but not getting really in the center of it. Okay, and we're going to move, man, if that thing would just focus a little bit better, I don't know how to get it to focus really well. It's not a high quality camera, people. And we're going to blend. See, you can blend one way with, with the paintbrush, or if you had a real harsh, heavy line, you can just take your finger 
and kind of run along that heavy line, pull some of that paint off and create a softer transition. Because that's all we're trying to do is just create a nice soft transition between the dark orange and the lighter orange as we go. And this is kind of why we layer up. I layer up so much orange paint with, like I said, when I used to do just the um, black and then uh, dry brush white on top. I used to base out like that too and then paint this way until I realized that basically by the time I got done layering all this paint up, uh, all that black and then white dry brush that I'd been doing previously um, wasn't adding to the paint job. Okay, I forgot all about that. Uh, about the pause right there uh, so i've got some things i need to go deal with uh, life has happened nothing bad everything's okay like that so no one's injured or hurt or anything else but i've got to go take care of some stuff so this is going to i gotta pause 
I got to shut us down now and then uh, I'll come back later on today sometime either this afternoon whatever in an hour or so whatever's going on I'll get back on here and we'll continue painting this thing um, I apologize to all you guys that are here right now watching um, but life just kind of happens sometimes so anyway I'll catch you guys in later uh, today in a few hours possibly and we'll get back on this and get this thing finished up again guys i'm super super sorry uh, i just got to go deal with some, <laughs> i got to go deal with a few things all right and i'll see you all here uh after a little while